Blur, get the Dinobots in the shuttle. I'm trying to, older madness. I don't care. Oh, hey, what's up? It's Fable from One Collection Down, and you're watching s 82 Comic Book Addicts Station. <laughs> what's up everybody welcome to another comic book addicts uh this is episode 61 we're up to episode 61 it's the week it's not my birthday but i'm calling it my birthday live stream because my actual birthday is this wednesday on new comic book day so um i won't see you guys again till next week so i figured i'd just attach it to the live stream anyways we're here it's gonna be an awesome night got a really cool guest uh, when i was trying to think of people that i wanted to have back that I just had a really good time with this past year, um, having on comic book addicts. Um, Sonia Saturday was definitely at the top of the list. Just somebody um, that I thought was highly entertaining and uh, just a lot of fun. So um, Sonia agreed to come back and hang out with us. So we got Sonia as a special guest tonight. So I'm excited about that. Um, I've been excited about that all week, but then we got some really bad news um, earlier today. And um, Ed Pisker has passed away. Big, big artist, highly respected artist. Um, not necessarily recently. He kind of got himself in a little bit of trouble. Um, but we found out that he passed away. And that kind of, I don't know, it's kind of left me in shock. Um, I just found out a little while ago. But I was a fan of his artwork. I was a big fan of Red Room. Um, I was a fan of the uh, Marvel X-Men uh, Grand Design and uh, the Fantastic Four grand design that he did and um it just sucks it just sucks but uh it just i don't know just if 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 you guys need help or if you if you need something reach out to somebody there's so many good people in this community um if you're hurting or if you need anything please reach out i'm always here for any of you guys um but anyways let's get on to something let's get on to a better subject because it's an awesome week we, it's the start of a brand new month it's april fool's day april 1st uh, let's see who we got in the chat. We got Las Crucius first, as usual. Um, he was here this morning. He said, good morning. Uh, always first in line. Everybody's live stream. Dude, I appreciate you so much. You're so awesome, dude. Uh, thank you for showing up week in and week out. And uh, I dropped my vape, sorry. And just showing up and, and supporting, man. I really do appreciate you. We got Brian LCS, president of the CBC Awards, the Comic Book Community Awards. Uh, he says, happy, happy early birthday, Scott. Thank you so much, Brian. I appreciate you uh, popping in here and uh, saying what's up and supporting me week after week. And um, thank you, man. It means a lot. And uh, I hope you're doing well this week. We got Phil, Phil's Treehouse. He says, greetings from the forest. What's up, Phil? I hope you're doing well this week. The start to, um, the start to spring. So hopefully we'll get some better weather soon. Um, hope you've got having good weather where you're at and having a good day and all that good stuff. We got comics by the bay, dude. I was just talking to him the other day. Um, I got a package I'm sending out to him, uh, tomorrow actually, but what's up, dude. Thanks for popping in. We got my comic pops, Lorenzo indie comics and reviews, uh, best, best comic book reviews on YouTube. If you want to see a good comic book review, go check out indie comics and reviews, my comic pops. Thanks for coming by Lorenzo. Uh, we got X11 Bravo. Thank you for coming in, man. Um, one of my buddies from over on IG, really, really good dude. He does some tremendous things with um, uh, veterans and just always doing some good stuff. Uh, but check out X11 Bravo if you aren't familiar. Really good guy. Um, thanks for coming by. Let's see, make sure we're not missing. Oh, we got Vogs. We got Vogs in the house. What's up, dude? Says so Scotty, what's up, dude? I hope you're having a good day. Thanks for coming by, man. We got Trev, the shipping guru. He actually had a birthday this past week. I hope you had a great birthday, man. Uh, he says, good evening, Scotty and everybody. I hope you're having a great Monday, dude. Thanks for coming by. We got Marcus, my comic book brother. Um, I mentioned my comic pops. Here's my comic book brother, Marcus. Circumstances. Uh, thanks for coming by. He says, what's up, homies? I uh, hope you're doing well this week, man. Uh, I know he's a fan of Ed Pisker. How do you feel about that, dude? Let me know how you feel about that in the comments. Are you in shock right now about that? Because it's kind of got me in shock. Uh, it's, I don't know. It, it had me tore up for a minute. Kenneth Bird he says hi to everyone. What's up, Kenneth? Hope you're doing well this week, man. Bottom tier collector. What's up? He says X11 Bravo is the man. A X11 Bravo absolutely is the man. Um, he's always doing good things. And, um, 
just because I'm on live stream and I'm in front of a camera, I'm not going to be able to name any of the absolutely good stuff that he does, but he's an amazing dude. Um, just, I don't know. I go blank. That's why I have to write everything down uh, in case I forget, but that's the way that my, my brain works when I'm in front of a camera. It sucks. I have to script everything out. we got actual Dracula. What's up, Drac? An amazing artist. He says, good evening. What's going on, dude? Thanks for coming by. Let's see. Marcus says, I absolutely hate it, and I'm questioning my own involvement in the Ed Pisker pylon. Dude, I know. I kind of felt bad about it because uh, I was talking about I was talking about it with another member of the community, and I didn't necessarily say some some nice things. Um, I don't know, man. It's just hard. It's like, did he do some bad things? Yes, he did. Um, but dude, man, just I don't know. After finding out what happened, it just kind of erases all that. And I just feel really bad. I'm I'm in shock about it. Um, I didn't. I haven't seen it, man. I don't know that I want to see that. I, I don't know that I want to see it, but. It just sucks, man. The whole situation sucks. I hate to see that it ended that way because it was a situation that he could have came out of. Um, he could have came. Uh, it wasn't something that he couldn't have worked his way out of and still been a successful artist and still highly respected. Um, it's, it's you know, it's not on the level of like the Ren and Stimpy creator or something like. Um, it, it was bad, but it wasn't. I don't know. I don't know. It's just sad. Roscoe, what's up, man? Roscoe uh, from the Monday night lineup next up at 8.35 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, they got a good guest tonight over on Between the Lines. They have Ronaldo Pizarro over there at Geek Out with Roscoe's channel. So uh, that's right after this at 8.35 p.m. Eastern time. So go check that out. Let's see. Let me skim through, make sure I'm not missing anybody else. Bottom tier collector says, I met Ed Pisker. I've read some of the hip hop family tree. Yeah, that was a good book. That was awesome. Those were really good books. He signed my number one. I'm trying to stay detached from it. Yeah, I feel you, man. It's just sad news, Marcus. I met Ed in 2022 at Heroes. Seemed like a cool dude to me. It sucks, man. I, I didn't get to meet him. And uh, I was hoping that I would get to one day. So that's sucks. Matt says the suicide note is sad. Dude could have gotten help. Absolutely. It, it, like I was saying, it's, it's, it wasn't something that he couldn't come back from. Like it, you know, like I've, the stuff that I've done in my life, it didn't really affect people directly like that. Um, but I, I don't know. I did a lot of bad things to hurt people around me. And um, I don't know, people you're, you can do the things to correct it and make it right. And you can come back from almost anything short of like killing somebody or, uh, you know, just the really bad stuff. But he, I don't know. It just, it was, it's horrible. Anyways, let's move on to better things. We got the Monday night lineup this evening. Uh, like I was saying before, between the lines, great guest over there, geek out with Roscoe's channel. Um, at 9 PM Eastern time, we have top 10 alternatives. One of my favorite comic book live streams. That's going to be over at 22 comics channel. Um, he's always coming up with cool alternative picks to the hot 10 list. Um, then we got Cupo comics with his Monday night raw books at 10 PM Eastern time. And, uh, that's always a fun time over there at his channel. So if you never checked out Monday night raw books, uh, go by and say what's up to will. Um, Izzy was not able to do his, um, comic book weekly pull list this evening. He normally starts it off at six 30. Um, but he actually had a death in his family. So Izzy, if you see this man, my condolences, everybody send their condolences to Izzy. Um, so obviously he won't be going live this week, but he, sh I don't know. I don't know if he'll be back next week or not. We'll wait and see. Um, but anyways, let's get to the guests. Cause we got an awesome guest this week. Um, our guest this evening, let me clear that off. Our guest this evening is a talented artist who has several titles available. Um, including my favorites, the greatest thing you've ever seen in your life. And there's two books. There's book one and book two. Book two is the one I'm holding in my hand. Um, I recently read this one, the JK Rowling and the ungrateful fans. I picked this up a couple weeks ago and read it. And um, it's, it's, I really liked it as well, but it's slightly different. It kind of actually gets a little bit sad. I don't know. I'll talk, I'll talk to Sonia about that when we bring it out here. Um, but I wanted to get Sonia back here when I was trying to think of people 
that um, were a lot of fun. Just wanted to have back to hang out for my birthday. Uh, Sonia Saturday was definitely at the top of the list. So uh, y'all help me welcome back for the second time, Sonia Saturday. What's up? Hello. Hey, Scott. Hey, hey. thanks for having me. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. It's nice to see you again. Yeah, it's awesome to have you back. Like, I'm such a big fan of yours. You're one of my favorite indie artists. Uh, some of the stuff that you came up with so far, I just think is highly creative. And I love your style. Um, it's got like a... And I don't want to insult you because of my lack of vocabulary. So please don't let me insult you. But it's got like a... Almost like a Sunday funny paper type feel to, to some of it. And I yeah. really dig it. Like, I really like it. Um, but it's definitely not the type of content that you would see, um, in a Sunday paper for sure. Like it's, it's, it's hilarious stuff, but it's like some, sometimes crazy and off the wall stuff as well. But it's like a lot of it is pulled directly from your life. Correct. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And the whole, um, Sunday paper thing, I mean, it's totally apt because I mean, when I started doing comics, it was cause I was, uh, really interested in like the. The alternative comic strips in like alt weekly newspapers which like barely exist anymore but at the time that was like the huge thing for me so i, I wanted to do uh, stuff like that yeah so i like the strip format yeah yeah and i, I dig it I, and the con like the stuff you come up with is hilarious uh like i was telling you we were talking about it i think yesterday or something i i, I have a bad memory but uh I was telling you that I liked your uh, comic strip, the the spit thing, where he's uh, the S P T O O. How you? How would you say? Oh, it's spitu, spitu, yeah, spitu. <laughs> yeah. How you say? But it was hilarious. It made me giggle the whole little clip. But it's uh, your books uh, just contain just a bunch of little things like that that just absolutely crack me up. But um, this this new book, I picked it up. And it's, it's titled JK Rowling and the ungrateful fans. And, um, it's got, it's not the same. It's not the same as the other two mm -hmm. books, um, which it's not meant to be obviously. Um, but for, for, you could probably explain what it's about better than I could. Could, would you mind explaining what this title is about to the people that are watching? Sure. So it's like a children's book. It's kind of like a Shel Silverstein type book. That's like where I got my inspiration from um supposed to kind of be like the giving tree except like instead of a tree it's an author and instead of being like really cool and generous to the children she's just kind of terrible to them yeah. and um and it's kind of a back and forth where like this writer writes these things that these children love you know and they just love everything about her and they buy all of her stuff but then they start growing up and i mean it's clearly about like transgender stuff i mean that's what it's about it's about like her okay. how she's constantly attacking the trans community which is uh important to me and um yes. yeah and so you know throughout the book um mm -hmm. the kids like they grow up and she doesn't really get them anymore and they kind of go back and forth where they're like asking her to be nice about trans people and she's like no i'm like rich and i'm smart and i don't need to listen to you so why would i you know and uh it kind of just goes on like that and yeah it ends up with a pretty sad ending or happy ending in her case so it yeah, I guess it depends yeah. on where you stand, but it, it, it had me feeling really sad, uh, which was different from uh, definitely a different tone compared to your other books. Um, but it was still great. It just like, I don't know, at the end, I'm like, man, this one had me like, I'm thinking about it, just really thinking about what I thought about it. Like, dude, I feel sad. Like, I just really feel sad with this one. It's, it's, it's good because that's probably what, I mean, I guess what you intended the part, the reader to, to feel, I guess. Oh yeah, I love it when I can make readers feel sad. That like really <laughs> pleases me. Like it really does. Uh, like I've written comics in the past, ones that I'm sure you haven't seen, but from like quite a while ago where it's like, I used to at different like art shows and things I would do, I would see people, I'd have really short, short comics and I'd see people just stand there and read the whole thing. And like, they'd be going from page to page, just like, oh, that's cute, that's cute, that's cute. And then the end is like sad and I could just like, see their faces just like drop and then they look a little bit devastated and i'm like i did that to you in 16 pages i feel really good about it so uh yeah they didn't buy it but whatever made that me happy has to be, i mean that has I'm to dead. be a great feeling to be able to you know, invoke that reaction from people 
Yeah, I like when I can like, because I like being funny, but uh, I use humor to deal with like sadness and depression. So if I can get both of those things in there together, I, I feel pretty good about it. Yeah. And I feel like that's something that like a lot of us deal with. I know that's something that I've dealt with heavily throughout my life. It um, was one of the contributing factors to my drug use, which led to like my demise and I don't know, just a lot of bad stuff for me. Um, So it's, it's definitely a thing in a lot of people's lives that uh, I can definitely relate to. Um, And I know a lot of people watching can relate to as well. Yeah, the whole, I mean, I've been dealing with depression, like serious depression since I was 19. So like 25 years at this point. But um, yeah, yeah, it takes it takes work. And I mean, the way I get through it, like I said, is I mean, well, like, work to try to feel better and deal with it. And also just like, my weird sense of humor is just like what gets me through life. And if I can just put some really weird stuff in my comics and my artwork and put it out there like that, like, I feel good about it. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. and, and like, I, I really like your stuff. I, I'm each time I read one of your books, it, it, it makes me laugh or it, it, it invokes some sort of emotion out of me. The, the first two were hilarious, like just some really funny stories. And we talked about a lot of them uh, last yeah. time that you were here. Um, but what are some, what's some of your favorite, like, Cause a lot of these, like I was saying, are pulled straight from your, straight from your life. Uh, yeah. And living where you're at. Like, well, actually, I guess we need to explain where you're from. Explain to everybody where you currently reside and, um, and all that good stuff. Yeah. I live in Los Angeles and, uh, as of like this month, I've been living here for about 20 years. Um, but I, I mean, I grew up in Jacksonville, Florida, Florida. Yeah. so it was very, very different, different type of place. And so, um, yeah so after i finished school i went to film school and uh i mean i was drawing comics when i was in college the whole time um so i was kind of focused on that but i also went to film school and like after i finished film school i just kind of packed up my car and drove to la and i've just been here ever since and uh, done a lot of different types of jobs and stuff but um the one thing that's always been consistent is like comics and art and things so that's pretty cool I'm, i'm glad that you stuck with it uh so the last time that you were here, it was, I, I had to look back and see the exact amount of time, but it was about six months ago. Um, what, what have you been up to in the last six months? Ha, have you been, has anything really good happened? Have you, uh, anything yeah. really cool or anything you want to talk about since the last yeah. time you were here? Yeah, I got some, I got some good stuff. I got a, I got a nice new girlfriend. I, I met her, I met her like days before you and I <laughs> met last time. So, uh, so that's cool. So that's cool. She's very, she's great. So that makes me happy. Uh, so, so everything's happy. going good with that. So that's, that's definitely awesome. So like six so. months, six months now, something like that. Yeah. Since late, late, oh, we met late August. Yeah. So I don't want to say too much cause I'm pretty sure she's watching live right now. So I don't want to, I don't want to embarrass her. Uh, oh, but so there's well, that <laughs> and, um, what else? I don't know. I, I've been, uh, well, I've got, I don't know, I, I don't want to get too deep into this, but I told you earlier, and I, this is on my social media, but I've got a pretty, like, major surgery coming up pretty soon, oh, yeah. important, important thing. So, like, I've spent the last several months just, like, preparing for that, just, like, preparing myself and my life for that, and that's kind of just taken priority out of everything. Um, and that's actually been, that's been really great, because I've been getting a lot of, like, really great love and support from, like, my friends. Just so many people have been really awesome, and that's been, like, really... I don't know. It just feels really good. You know, yeah, it, 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 yeah, feels, it feels really good that people come out for you. Yeah. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad that you have yeah. that love around you. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah. That's been really nice. Uh, I don't know if you follow me, like you see that I like to go dancing pretty regularly. I go to like the golf clubs and dress oh, up yeah. and stuff. And so that's, that's been really good having that community around. And um, yeah, it looks like so much fun. I'm always like, Every time I see the pictures, I'm like, God, that looks like so much fun. Like, it looks like you're just having a blast. I am. Yeah. Yeah. I really love, I really love getting dressed up and going dancing. And so that's why, that's why I do it regularly. We don't have that. We don't have anything like that here. I I live out in the sticks, so we don't, we don't have all that out here. So I don't get to have fun like that, but it's cool to get, it's cool to uh, 
live life vicariously through your pictures. <laughs> well, I didn't have anything like this for most of my life either. It's only in the last I don't know, several years that I kind of just was like, I want to go out and have a good time and dance. And so now I'm just doing it and it's great. So it's been it's really awesome. good for me. Yeah. Fun. Yeah. And like, obviously we don't want to get too into the, the personal stuff, but I do wish like you all the success. I hope everything goes well with that. And Thanks. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Definitely. Thank you for that. Thank you. You will um, get it all. Eventually. It's all going to be in comics. Eventually it's going to be like, it's going to be way too personal at some point. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm already, I'm already writing. I mean, I've been writing stuff down and you'll figure out, gonna, you're going to figure yeah. out a brilliant way to do it. And it's going to be, funny and you'll get your point across at the same time because that's what you're that's what i feel like you're good at doing like you you make your point and you manage to still be like hilarious at the same time which i love thank you thank you for that yeah that yeah. is nice thanks yeah but I try, uh, I try to try to be clear try to be clear with my thoughts and my words at least when i'm writing like if it's in person i'm all over the place but i think but uh hopefully in the um, comics i can make something something that people can understand as far as being all over the place goes like i am the most all over the place person you'll ever meet like my brain is a thousand miles an hour i don't know how bad i show it but it's like it's like that <laughs> so what's up cliff yeah it is it is it's like that for me too like i'm always things are always happening and it's like to had to do a lot a lot of work and stuff over the years to try to like be able to Focus. Be able to like focus and not like just like disappear. There'll be times I'll be hanging out with my girlfriend or other people or something, and we'll be in a conversation, and then I'll say something or they'll say something, and then suddenly I'm just kind of like staring over there, and but there's like a million things happening. I'm like very intent on like one thing, <laughs> and people are like, I can see the wheels in your head turning right now. Like you just <laughs> disappeared. I'm like, oh, sorry. <laughs> so I was talking about I got a birthday in a couple of days. Well, you actually had a birthday recently as well, correct? Yeah, a few weeks ago. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. How did that go? Did you have a good birthday? I had a great birthday. Best birthday I've had in years. Yeah, it was fantastic. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. How was the yeah. cake? I saw pictures of the cake that you made. How was that? How did it, how did uh, it turn out? It was really good. Yeah, I, I don't know if you know this, but I kind of into baking cakes. I don't do it that often, but um, I have this like tradition that I started eight years ago, I do a thing called a chaotic Christmas cake. Mm -hmm. Every, every Christmas I make a, I bake a cake, I spend the day baking a cake and like decorating it in just like the most bizarre ways. It's this sort of like in the moment art expressionist thing with all like the uh, frostings and icings and whatever. So, awesome. but over the years, like it's gotten less kind of manic and I've been more, I've been learning more about actually making a decent cake. Yeah. So, uh, so for my birthday, I just kind of threw one together and, and it came out pretty nice. Yeah. What kind of cake did you make? Uh, it was red velvet on the bottom and chocolate fudge on the top. And it had like a pink vanilla icing uh, with sprinkles. Oh. And it was, it was really good. Came out, I mean, good. I did it last minute. It was really good. Yeah. yeah. Brother John says, happy birthday to you both. I appreciate that. Thank man. You. Thank, Thank you so much. much. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. So are you in, are you in Aries or are you the, are, do, you, do you fall in the Aries range with your uh, I'm Pisces? I'm Pisces. Pisces. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. My best friend growing up was a Pisces. I think I'm an Aries. Pretty sure I'm an Aries. Pro probably. I am not an expert on uh, yeah. astrology. <laughs> I'm just yeah, not. Me. I have. I do have. Um, when I wear my horns to the clubs, I often have people come up to me say, "Like, are you a Capricorn?" I'm like, "No, no, 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 no." It's not, a, it's not a zodiac thing. It's just a, a demon just, thing. Yeah, it's just, it's yeah. just part of Sonia Saturday. Yeah, right? it's just my thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your yeah. thing. Yeah. Gemini, awesome. Um, so you probably won't with the with the surgery. You probably that'll probably you probably won't be putting out any art anytime soon. Correct. It'll probably be a little while before you do anything else. Pro probably, yeah. I. Uh, We'll see though. I mean, probably not, but um, I actually just got an iPad. Like I haven't had an iPad in like 10 years, if not more. And so I've been kind of playing around with like drawing on it. I don't, I don't ever really draw. I have a, I have a, um, a pen display for my desktop and that's a lot of what I use a lot of the time. 
So mm -hmm. I'm not really used to drawing digitally on mobile, really. It's not really a thing I've ever really gotten that into, at least not lately. So I'm going to have that with me throughout all this. So so we'll see how that goes. Maybe I'll be able to bust something out. We'll see. Uh, I don't, no promises, no promises, but that's we'll see what happens. I'm, I'm, I've, I've got the option there if I learn it, if I, if I pick it up quickly enough. Yeah, well, it's cool yeah. to have the option if you feel inspired or something, or if you're just really bored. I'm, I'm going to be really bored. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not supposed to be doing anything really. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, that's going to suck. Yeah. Uh, okay. It'll be I'll worth watch. it though. It's going to be worth it. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Awesome. I'll watch movies, read books. It's all good. I've got a million comics loaded up on there to read that I want to catch yeah. up on. So yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. Well, as far as like art, have you done? Have you? um messed around with anything lately have you been messing around with art any at all or are you just yeah i mean i i sketch i always have ideas i'm always sketching uh just depends i don't know i, I go through I, I go through these like phases like it used to be where i'd always be working on multiple projects at once so i'm like finishing one when i'm in the middle of another you know but in the last like couple years probably since COVID really, my workflow has totally changed to where I go through these periods of like months where I'm really into working on one thing and then it's done. Yeah. And then I'm like, well, now I'm kind of like in, I don't know, taking it all in mode, you know, and and like preparing for the next thing. It's it's a different process that I'm still getting used to. It's just, it's just where I'm at, but okay. I don't know. I Doing sketching, it gets, it gets, I have to try not to let myself get too frustrated when I'm not actually on a big, on, on a particular project. Yeah. Like when I'm in between them, it's easy for me to get frustrated about it and be down about it. But like, I'm trying to like go a little bit more easy on myself with like, I know I can produce something and I will mm -hmm. just right now. I'm like something different's happening inside of me. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Now, um, when you get down like that, how do you deal with it? Like how, how do you have any tricks that you found like to pull yourself out of it? Um, is it something that you've, where you've learned little ways to pull yourself out of it or, um, yeah. Know, do you know anything that, cause like I know little ways that I can get, keep myself from falling into it, but it's, it's hard to pull myself out of it. If I fall into yeah. like a depression like that. Yeah, it is hard. Um, I mean, I, like I said before, I've been, <laughs> learning different ways to deal with it for you know a couple decades at this point and i mean i've gotten to a place where it's like i have all of these different things that i know that help me i mean yeah. ex exercise is a really big one yeah uh, yeah like that's just really like if i start feeling a little bit stressed a little bit more anxious i know if i just like get on an exercise bike or something for a, for a little while like i know i'm gonna feel a bit better um i, I have a regular meditation practice i've been Awesome. Med meditating for three and a half years at this point. That's been oh, great. That's helped yeah. a lot of people that I know, like so many people that I know. Yeah. yeah, it's been really good for me. I meditate twice a day, every every single day. And that's like, it's just part of my life now. And it really cool. helps. Um, you know, gut health is like a whole thing. Like people yeah. always talk about gut health, but God, it's true. Yeah, so it really does make a difference. It, and also, honestly, just like, learning like with therapists I've worked with over the last few years, mm -hmm. kind of learning to just sort of be a bit kinder to myself. Just like internally, just like every time I catch myself thinking or saying something negative about myself, I'm, I've gotten better at like catching it, you know, like, yeah. and, and, and telling myself, no, I don't, I don't really need to do that. That doesn't help me at all. So yeah. Yeah. No, comes with practice. I'm so bad at like, I'm the world's worst at self-sabotaging and like yeah. tearing myself apart, uh, inside. And, uh, it's easy to do. It's really easy to do. Mm -hmm. Um, but it sounds like you're at least surrounded by some people that love you and you know, you, you got a good girlfriend now. That's awesome. Um, and yeah. it sounds like you got a, uh, like a somewhat of a safety net around you. So that's good. Yeah. Yeah. That's been really good. Yeah. Learning to like appreciate the people that you've got around you is like really big. Yeah. It's taken me a long time to get there because like, even though you can like know that the people around you are really good, like if you're down on yourself, it's hard to, it's hard to accept it, you know? So, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Have yeah. you, um, have you read it? Are you, 
Have you read a lot, anything lately, like any good books or anything lately? Oh yeah, actually, I forgot to tell you this earlier, but I've brought up, I brought some show and tell of actually what I've been, <laughs> what I've been reading. Yeah. yeah, I was gonna ask you if you've read anything good lately. Yeah, I yeah, there's been some really good stuff that I've uh, into. Oh, sure. Let me see what I got here. I, I've got got my little show and tell right now. If you want me to just like show some things. Yeah, hold on. I'm trying to. Okay, sure. I'm slow. I'm trying to blow you up on the screen here. Let's swap out. There we go. Well, all right. I'm huge. All right. Uh, so right now I'm in the middle of a. Uh, do you like Al comics by Alejandro Jodorowsky? Do you, do you ever you read any of his stuff? I'm like I'm not the, sure. The Inkle. Okay, the Inkle. He used to work with Mobius a lot. When like I'm really into like Euro European comics, like in the whole like heavy metal. Uh, oh, okay, scene. okay. Yeah. So That's cool. the Inkle and um, I'm reading right now. I'm reading the Meta Barons. Uh, what is, is that about? The Inkle. <sighs> Fuck if I know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the art, the cover looks cool. Yeah, the art's fantastic. Uh, I don't know. Joe Dorosky is like, when it comes to like storytelling, he's just like kind of such a madman. It's wild. Like, I don't know. Like, I'm sure in like real life, he's like a lovely, lovely man. But like reading his stories, you'll like get to some weird thing in here and you're like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> You're on here. I'm sorry. <laughs> No, you can cuss all you want to. Yeah. All right. So um, I don't know. The Meta Barons are like this, like, it, it takes place, like, I don't know. It's a sci-fi thing. And, like, the Meta Barons are like these, um, the greatest, it's a clan of the greatest warriors in the universe. And it's passed from, like, father to son. So um, it's, but it's like every son to become the next Mara ba Meta Baron, he has to kill his father. And, like, part of, and it, this is, like, going through the whole history of the Meta Barons clan. And like oh. part of the initiation to become part of the Meta Barons, like is the father has to like physically mutilate his son in one way or another. So like oh, wow. it's like so like one of them, the father like crushes his son's ear and has the ear replaced with this whole like computer thing. And another one, his son has to like withstand all of this like pain. So he like puts his legs in this contraption that literally crush his legs. And then from then on, he has like metal feet. It's so weird, wow. but he can also float. I don't know. So when he undoes his metal feet, he could just fly essentially. It's so bizarre. That so, uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm on, I'm reading the meta barons right now. Um, uh, the meta barons. Yeah. It's not recent. I mean, it's maybe 20 years ago or something like that. Um, but it's, it's put up by humanoids. I don't know if you, if you re read anything from humanoids. I'm going to look it that, up. I'm going to yeah, check it out. That's the company co-founded by Mobius and a, and a few other people uh, when they were doing like heavy metal and all that stuff back in the 80s, late 70s, 80s. That's cool. So, I'm not very familiar, but I'm going to look it up though and learn. I'm a comic yeah, I'm, nerd, so I like to yeah, learn about it. That's cool. Yeah, I'm really into like the, like the European comics or that stuff in that whole vein. Um, I really like uh, comics by Milo Minara. I love his his artwork a lot. He's he's actually done a lot of Marvel art, um, and so is so did Mobius when he was alive. Um, you know, uh, it's, it's like Bastards. Is I that who did? So. I I'm not sure. Think, I, th I think so. Yeah, I haven't read that one, but I think so. I think I've actually got copies of that somewhere. Um, yeah, right now I'm kind of just going through a lot of Jodorowsky stuff. Um, what else have I been reading? Uh, do you know uh, this publisher out of Italy called Hollow Press? No. Uh -uh. Okay. They do a lot of like really dark books from I like dark. different artists. And um, they publish a bunch of things by Shintaro Kago, who okay. does, um, who's on my shirt. Uh, but um, Shintaro Whoa. Kago, this is, this is, I haven't read this one yet, but this is on my list. Uh, Parasitic. Whoa. Yeah. This is like one of his new things. He does this wild stuff. That is crazy of, looking. I love the yeah. art on the cover, on on the back cover. Holy shit! Yeah, his art's fantastic. He's one of my favorite artists. But he does a lot of uh, stuff of like heads exploding and like things coming out. Like I have a shirt like this that's like a a schoolgirl's head splitting open and all these cats are coming out. Wow! It's that's stuff awesome. like that. Yeah. So that this is this is up next from a humanoid or, or from Hollow Press. Um, here's that's another one from. Cool. Another one from Hollow Press I've just read a little while ago that I loved. Uh, this first book 
by it's called a uh, Tristitia. I'm not sure. I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, there's Ooh. some nudity on there. Sorry. No, uh, it's good. It's good. Uh, but uh, I mean, uh, anyway, so this is from Hollow Press. I love the binding on this. It's like all solid black, black. It's that's like a really beautiful cool. book. Oh yeah, my it's, god, it's super cool. Uh, it's got like, the glossy with the matte, and it, yeah, that looks beautiful. Yeah, it's like this really dark, like it's like kind of dark goth erotic horror stuff. Oh, and I really love this. I love yeah. that. Yeah, the art's really cool. I think this is her first book, Perdita Virgeria, if you can even read that. I don't know. Oh, I'm writing uh, that down. Yeah, I love this one. Uh, this is one of my favorites that I've read lately. It's super cool. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm into this, like, we, like, weird stuff that you have to get from overseas. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Stuff that I takes really money to get here. I'm not real familiar with, like, stuff from overseas to be honest with you yeah it's my it's my favorite stuff um i'm really into horror manga i mean like the shintaro kago i just got this in uh oh, really? it's a, a new re-release a new edition of panorama of hell by hideshi hino that looks awesome oh it is yeah the, the original book came out like decades ago and the english version came out hasn't been in print from a different publisher like i got my copy like 20 years ago and i was lucky to find it so mm -hmm. it's been out of print in English since then, but Hideshi Hino is kind of considered one of like the godfathers of like horror manga. So uh, I'm I'm super. So this is the new edition from from um, Starfruit Books, which is like a small publisher in Florida. So Great. I think it, getting their stuff. So I really I really love his I love his work a lot. Oh yeah, that looks cool. Yeah, so that's what I've been into lately. Hell yeah! yeah. Well, that's some good stuff. I'll do a show and tell. I'll show some stuff. I'll show yeah, some of your interior stuff. Here, let me get myself okay, sure. blown up, and I'll show them some of your stuff because I want to show off some of the interiors on your book. Uh, this is the greatest thing you've ever seen in your life. This is book one. This is part one. Um, it's from March 2023, and it's got some really cool stories. I just wanted to show you guys that are watching some of the so you can see some of uh, Sonia Saturday's art style because I'm really into it. And some of the stories are just absolutely hilarious. Uh, hold on. Let me find a funny story. Let's see. Oh, here's one. My hilarious grandmother. Here's the one about <laughs> your, your grandmother. That, yeah. one, that one made me giggle when I first read it. Um, but just all these hilarious stories. And uh, so if you're into this style of artwork, um, this book is titled The Greatest Thing You've Ever Seen in Your Life. And um, you can actually find these on Sonia Saturday's Etsy. You can find this book and you can find this book on Sonia Saturday's Etsy. Um, this book right here, I think you have to go to Amazon to get it. Um, yeah. But these two you can find on Sonia Saturday's Etsy. And I'll, I'll show you guys some of the interior artwork on the on book two just some really hilarious like okay the backstory or the back cover trader joe's holiday douche guide check this out <laughs> that is hilarious it's got a cleansing blend coffee douche peppermint cook, cookie anal douche traditional eggnog douche uh sugar plum sparkling douche i mean it just goes on and on it's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. yeah it is so funny uh let's see Here's uh, the Sonia Saturday character, that the actual character right here. And you follow the character throughout these two books, um, these funny ass stories. Um, the first time you got called an obscenity, uh, very, very bad obscenity. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to think of some of the different stories. Um, back when I was 28 and still living as a guy, I started dating a woman who was 47 so that's interesting. There's lots of good stuff in here, guys. Really good stuff. But I wanted to use my show and tell um, to show off these two titles. I highly recommend them. Uh, Sonia Saturday is. Let's see, I'm trying to think because I don't want to just bullshit you guys and just be an outright liar. I'm think I think Sonia Saturday is probably my favorite independent artist. Honestly, um, I just really dig the books. So uh, I highly recommend 
these two in particular. And then the, the other one I read recently, it's got a sad tone to it. So just be aware of that. It's not funny. So I, I didn't know going into it, but I thought that it was just as good. Um, but I highly recommend these titles though. So I wanted to show those off and, um, you guys should go pick them up and check it out if you're into that style for sure. Thank you so much for all that, Scott. That's really, it's really nice of you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. No, absolutely. Very Cause I mean, it's not a lie. Like that's the reason why I wanted to have you yeah. back because like, I'm just such a fan, um, of your art and, um, that's why I went out and got all the books and I actually, I wanted to talk to you. There's been another mm -hmm. one that I haven't picked up yet. I'm going to have to find, I think I can get it on Amazon, uh, but it's the children's book. You actually did like a legit children's book, correct? I've done a few actually. It's just not oh. all of them are out under my current name. Uh, I used to do, I actually used to make children's apps a little over a decade ago. I was making inner, I was making sort of interactive children's storybooks for, for tablets. Wow. Uh, okay. Digital. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I have some, are you talking about the Ninja dinosaur? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You'll like that. You'll like that one. That was the next one I was going to pick up. And it's, it says that it's just like a straight out children's book. Correct. Mm -hmm. Like no, it's, yeah. it's an actual, like you could, a yeah. little kid could read it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I've had people send me photos of their children who like four or five year olds who just love that book and just like carry it around, which is like amazing. That's um, funny. Yeah, yeah. Ninja, uh, it's called a Ninja Dinosaur Christmas, and uh, Dinosaur it's a. Christmas. I love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's about a. I don't know if you know what it's about. It's a. It's no. a. It's about a dinosaur that gets turned into a ninja by space aliens, and then the aliens send him into our time to kind of stop Christmas, and then the Ninja Dinosaur gets stopped by a little girl, her purple cat, and pirate Santa Claus. Because, uh, like, legally, I figured legally, if you're going to make a Christmas book about a ninja dinosaur, you have to have a pirate Santa Claus in there or else they come for you. So, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. that sounds about right. I like that. That sounds like a funny premise for a children's book. But yeah, I like gonna, it. I'm going to grab it. That's the next one I cool. was going to pick up for sure. It, it looks fun from the cover. The cover looks cool. Yeah, it's cool. It's one of it's one of my favorites that I've ever done. Yeah, I love those characters. It's very silly. Awesome. Do you yeah. think that you'll ever return to that someday? Is that something that you had fun doing? Yeah, I would actually love to do more Ninja Dinosaur stuff um, or just more children's stuff. I, I kind of, I don't know. There's the, there's the parts of me that's like, I focused on work for children for a while because I was like, well, this adult stuff's like, uh, this adult stuff's like kind of a hard sell for a lot of people. So what if I focus on work for children and especially since people see my artwork and they you know figure it's for children i mean unless of course like it's some really adult stuff but um yeah but my style kind of works for both you know it does uh, it really does That's, yeah uh, so it, yeah. it i don't know it translates really well in both so i agree Thanks. yeah i have i have i've had more story ideas for more specifically more ninja dinosaur stuff for like years it's just like I don't know. Uh, do I just do I spend the time making more Ninja Dinosaur? I don't know. Maybe, probably <laughs> eventually. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Well, um, you should do. Um, well, I had an idea earlier. Hold on. Uh, you're gonna think I'm stupid. Okay, here it is. <laughs> I got an idea for you. Um, are you aware that Corey Feldman has tried for years to be a singer? You're probably very aware mm -hmm. of that, right? His yeah. singing career. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, Nazis have taken over the world and the only way they can be stopped is by basically Corey Feldman and his superpower. And his superpower is basically him singing Ascension Millennium. And when he does oh. that, the Nazis die and he just goes around singing his different hits and he oh. kills Nazis by singing, go for it with a real four in the name and right. Ascension Millennium and different hits by Corey Feldman. <laughs> have you have you tried pitching this to him? It sounds like he'd probably be really into it. <laughs> no, it's I just think something. Go, I think you should go for it. it. It's one of those stoner ideas that's just, I don't know. <laughs> I'll forget about it in five minutes. But I just thought it was funny, the fact that Corey Feldman has been really going at it musically for like a long time. Like decades. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's wild. I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know what to make of that. I, I, I know someone like, 
like I know someone who's just like obsessed with Corey Feldman and like loves going to his concerts and like takes every opportunity she can to like be anywhere near him. Wow. I, I don't get it, but you know what? Know. It makes her happy. So, yeah. <laughs> well, like I was watching some of his performances and I was really genuinely trying to figure out if he's, if he knows that it's like looked at as a joke or if he just really uh, honestly doesn't know. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. know. I, don't, I don't know. I I, w- I would be hesitant to ask him that question. Yeah. No, that would that would probably <laughs> piss him off. He he probably takes it very seriously. Honestly, probably but does. Like, I don't think you'd be doing it for this long if if you weren't serious about something, dude. But like, God, how, how many years has he done it? And you would think you would get better with all the practice, but he just never got better. Maybe he just is happy with what he's doing and he does it okay. the amount that he wants to do it. I don't know. That's valid. Now, if that was yeah. the answer, then that would shut me up and that would totally be valid. <laughs> yeah, that's valid. I mean, if he's just, yeah, that's a good yeah. answer. Yeah, maybe he's where he is. Maybe he's where he wants, he's already where he wants to be, maybe. True, true. Yeah. Maybe, maybe he's just living the life. He's probably living a life I wish I, wish I could have. Who knows? Yeah, me too, me too. Yeah, yeah. But speaking of the life we wish we could have, I didn't really get to talk to you about like stuff on a, and I'm not going to get too personal, so don't get scared. But like, I didn't get to ask you about things like per per, some personal stuff last time, because we wanted to talk about the books. Um, But like, what would be just a fantastic day for you? Like, what is the, the ideal day for Sonia Saturday? If you could spend it just the perfect way you wanted to. Uh, God, is there a way to have like a, I don't know if I even want to say that, uh, uh, let me, let me try to make it PG 13 at least. You can Um, say whatever you want. It's, it's rated mature. We're rated mature. Is there like a, is like, would it be possible to like be at sea? Cause I love the ocean. Would it be possible to like be at sea but also have like a really well equipped BDSM dungeon on your ship. That might be that might be a great way to spend a day. Uh that could be something. That would uh, be a pretty cool comic I, book too. And that would be a good comic book like like Dominate <laughs> sees at, at at sea. I don't know. Uh that'd be a little bit weird, but that'd be cool. Uh be awesome. what else would be a you know what? You know what actually is really like a really great day for me is I actually really love visiting museums. Uh, I, I always have a good time when I go to like either like a natural history museum or I, I love planetariums. I just love planetariums. Yeah. Yeah, I love cool. I love taking naps in planetariums. It's like the greatest thing. Uh, space is crazy. Space yeah. is the way. Yeah, it's like you're sleeping in space. It's really cool. So like any day I can go to like a planetarium and take a nap and then like go to the planetarium cafe and get one of their like terrible cafe hot dogs. Honestly, that makes me so happy. That's, that's actually pretty cool though. I like that. The stoner in me likes that too. Cause <laughs> I would, I would definitely smoke out beforehand and I'd be good. I'd be good to go. Yeah, that'd be great. I don't, I don't smoke anymore, but I wish I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds like fun. Well, okay. Um, if you could, Let's see if you could create the perfect comic book about your life. Um, what would the dream creative team be? If you could just handpick anybody, who would you have writing and who would you have on the art? Uh, well, writing would be me. Okay. Cause I don't know who could write it better than you. I mean, I'm sure somebody could write it better than me. I'm not, I'm not that conceited, <laughs> but <laughs> since it's about my life, I mean, I would at least need to be involved. I should hope. Okay. Uh, That'd be nice if I was involved in the stories about my own life. Uh, so there's that. And then as far as art, yeah, if I didn't have to draw it myself and it could look a lot better than what I do. Uh, yeah, you have yeah. a budget. You could hire somebody. Like I could hire you somebody. God, I don't know. They'd have to like fit in. I don't know if they'd have to fit in with my sensibilities necessarily with like my humor sensibility, but like it'd be it'd be wild to have like one of like the superhero artists who I really love, like, um, oh God, you know who would be great? I would love to have 
if, if I could get Joe Linsner, Joseph Michael Linsner, the oh creator of Don't God. like dry yeah, draw I comments do. about my life. Yeah. I yeah, I've actually been I've been on this weird Dawn kick lately where I've been like finding old Dawn posters on eBay for really cheap. Yes. I, I don't I don't know. I'm just like getting back into Dawn. It's really you know, I yeah. have like a whole short box of stuff like signed by Joseph Michael Linsner. I'm a That's huge great. fan of his. Huge yeah, fan. me too. Me too. I have I have several prints that he's that I got that he signed for me and various things. But like, awesome. yeah, I love his art. Um, yeah, he'd be one. Oh God, you know who I really really love is this Spanish artist, uh, Raúl Caseras. I I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm probably not pronouncing that right, but he does he he's kind of like one of my favorite sort of like really elaborately drawn insanely detailed erotic horror artwork like okay. um he's one of my favorites he's yeah he, he i think he's in he, he lives in spain and he mostly works in in european market but he's done some work here he's drawn covers and stuff for um some Warren Ellis comics, like um, was it Doctor Sleepless or whatever that was, or and uh, he drew some art for Alan Moore's Providence, Providence, Provi oh, Providence cool. comics. Yeah, he does just, and he actually did a drawing of me the last time I ordered some books from him. What? So he did, yeah, he did this like black and white. He just did it. He just included it in my order of me, and it's like me with like my horns and like blood and like fangs and everything. And it's on my Instagram. It's from maybe about a year ago. If you scroll down to see it, but like, wow. so so he drew me. That is amazing. Just, just awesome. So actually, he's probably who I'd go with first. Him or him or Linsner. Yeah, I love those. That's yeah, that's an amazing answer. Um, and speaking of drawn stuff, the you drew a little sketch and and sent it to me with one of the books that I ordered and um, I actually got it. I ended up, let's see if I can pull it down. I actually framed it and put it back Aww. on in the background, background wall behind me. So Aww. just show everybody that's so watching. Nice. Yeah. It's like one of my only pieces of original art, but like, I really love that. I love that little piece. It's so cool. But uh, I, I appreciate you doing that. I thought that that was awesome. That's uh, so cool. I'm really, I'm really glad you like it. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. It makes me really happy. Huge fan. Um, cool. You, uh, I was going to tell you out of all the guests when I was looking back and like comic book addicts, it's not huge or anything yet. I've done 60, a little over 60 shows, like probably 63 or 64 if you count like charity ones. Mm -hmm. um, but all out of all the shows though, the show that you were on the last time was the high, the highest viewed out of all of them. It had the highest views. I don't know why, but okay, I'll take it. That's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. I just, I don't, okay. I just figured I'd tell you. I went through and yeah. looked and I was like, holy shit. Like, cause I was looking, I was actually looking at how long ago it had been since you were last on here. Um, but then when I looked at the number and then I looked at all the other numbers, I'm like, damn, besides the cancer show, that was the highest show. So I was like, damn, that's saying wow. something for you, I guess. It's me and cancer all the way. You know what? If I'm I mean, as famous as cancer, you're right there. I mean, and to hang in there with a, a with a cancer charity like C3 cool. is an amazing event. That's um, very cool. Yeah, dude. I mean, that says something for you though. Like people really wanted to see you. That's really nice. That's that's yeah. really that's really nice. Yeah, that's so cool. Yeah, no, I just thought I would share that with you, so you can take that as a a, a good compliment, I guess. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. I really that's that's really great. Uh. uh uh, I, I, I got an award recently. It's not related to my mm -hmm. art at all. And I what what's didn't even realize, uh, uh, mm -hmm. one of the clubs that I like to go to is goth club. They uh -huh. just hit their one year anniversary and I didn't know they were going to do this, but, uh, I'll give them a shout out. The club's called doom and boom. And it's, uh, currently mm -hmm. Sunday nights in Hollywood. And, uh, I love that place. And, I didn't know that for their one year anniversary, they were going to give out like doom and boom awards. And so they, they, they gave awards to like a bunch of the regulars and they gave me the, uh, local legend award, which I thought was wild. Local legend. They referred to me as a legendary Hollywood nightlifer. 
And awesome. I was like, I'm going to put that in my bio from now on. Do it. Legendary Hollywood <laughs> nightlife. Oh, Award winning legendary Hollywood nightlifer. <laughs> That's awesome. That's really cool. And that place looks awesome too. It looks, uh, you guys, if you want to see it, you can, if you go to Sonia Saturday's Instagram, there are pictures of this place on there. If you want to check out what it looks like, but it looks amazing. It looks like a lot of fun. It's super fun. Yeah. Yeah. I love going there. I love the people there. So, uh, yeah, uh, that's cool. Good, good stuff lately. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Well, I sure am glad you were able to come back and hang out with us. It's been so much fun. I, I hope that um, everything goes well uh, with your upcoming uh, surgery and all that stuff. And then I hope that uh, I hope eventually that you get honest to God. I hope that you get inspired and pop off with some some more art in the in the near future, because I love your stuff. So just being honest, I hope you get something inspires you one day and you're like, damn it, I want to start drawing and, and pick I, up. This. I will. I will. I mean, it's coming. Like, I mean, I'm not. I'm not you. No, no, I am. It's yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, I, you, I, if I'm going to show you my list of things, I mean, I've honestly got enough stuff already drawn for like at least half of the third issue already. I was going to say, like, I was just getting ready to say, I feel like this needs a book three. Like, I really feel like yeah. it needs a book three. Yeah, there is going to be a, a book three. I just haven't done it yet. Okay. <laughs> but but I really do have like half of it done. That's cool. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I mean, at least at least I have that to look forward to. I have a glimmer of hope. So that's cool. It'll happen. It'll happen. Yeah. <laughs> well, who are um who are some of your favorite writers? Who are some people that you enjoy reading? Uh comics or anybody. specifically comics? Oh, well, I mean, anybody. my favorite all time like favorite author is Kurt Vonnegut. I'm um, just like crazy about Kurt Vonnegut. Uh, what, type of, uh, what type of stuff uh, does he write? Is it a he? Yeah, he's a, uh, well, he's dead now, but he's really oh. classic uh, American, uh, kind of satirical humanist type guy, like satiric, like very funny, very, very much caring about humans, about people. Um, uh, and uh, a lot of, he, science fiction in there, he mixes science fiction in with, it's not like full sci-fi, it's like, science fiction used for purposes of like humor and illustration of okay. like caring about people. So I love his, his book so much. Um, God, I, I'm crazy about the Dune books, the first six Dune books. Like I'm just wild about those books. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I've actually been rereading them lately. Uh, just reading them all over again. So I love, I love the Dune series, Frank Herbert. Um, I've never read those, uh, honestly. I love him. Uh, I've gotten back into Clive Barker in the last couple of years. I've read a lot of Clive Barker. Yeah, yeah. I'm a fan of Clive Barker for sure. I finally just read The Great and Secret Show about a year ago, which I had never read before. That was like a doorstop of a book, and I loved every second of it. And I, nice. could, not tell, I could not tell you what it was about. <laughs> it was like 600-something pages. I have no idea what it was about, but I loved it. That's a uh, – yeah. I understand what you're saying though, because that's how I felt that way about certain books. Like there's been some Anne Rice books I've read that I felt that way about. I'm like, I don't know what the fuck I just read, but I liked it though. It was really good. I keep meaning to read Anne Rice. Like I really, I've never read anything by her and I'm sure I would really love it. So. Oh man. I yeah, think you yeah. would dig it. I really I'm think sure that I, um, I I would highly recommend blood and gold. Uh, it's, oh. it's, it's about a vampire named Marius. Mm-hmm. And it has Lestat in it. If you're familiar with Cl- mm-hmm. Queen of the Damned, um, yeah. he is a character in it, but um, it's it's mainly about his teacher Marius. It's really, yeah. really good, really good. That's cool. I was watching the inter- the recent interview with the Vampire TV show. I don't know if you've seen it. The, they uh-huh. had one season so far. It's really good. I mean, I haven't read the book. I saw the other movie back in the day, and I really liked it. But I know it wasn't really like her vision. But yeah. um, the, the show is really good. And I have so many friends that just like love her writing. So I know at some point I got to get to it. Yeah. The Vampire Chronicles are, are pretty amazing. Uh, pa- Pandora was good too. That was another good one. But uh, what is there anything we hadn't covered that you want to talk about? Do you got anything coming up anytime soon? Uh, I have a pretty major surgery <laughs> coming well, up. I mean, yeah, yeah, after that, I know. Uh, uh, yeah, um, I have uh, in June 
he, I mean, it's just a, it's a one day thing or is it an all weekend thing in, um, I think West Hollywood, there's a small comic con called QCon. This is going to be like the third year for it. I'm going to have a table there. I'm pretty sure I'm going to have a table there. I'm going to be participating in some way or another. And then after that is San Diego comic con coming up in July. I always go to that. Um, Oh, one thing I actually didn't mention is I think it was like either, I think it was right after you and I talked last time, I got accepted into the National Cartoonist Society, what? like uh, the pro- Professional Cartoonist Society, you know, um, which I'd wanted to apply to for years and years and years. And I like went to one of their meetings in like 2005 and like never applied. And then I yeah. was just like too nervous and having imposter syndrome and thinking they would never wow. accept me. And then they did. So yeah. um, at some point, I'm going to start having tabling and doing signings with them at, at the various conventions just because I'm a member now. And that feels that super cool. So cool. Yeah, it's very validating. Thanks. I feel really good about it. Yeah. Yeah. Man, yeah. how cool yeah. is that? Yeah. yeah that's, it, that's nice. Good. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, exci- I, I'm, I'm happy about that because it's just something like I was like, I want to be part of the NCS because that's where all the cartoonists I love are like part of that i want to be one of those and like for them to be like oh yeah you you're you're in i'm like oh yeah sure. okay great you're official you, yeah it's cool yeah. yeah i went to their holiday party back in december that was super cool so man i bet that, that was, was awesome. really nice. it was really nice yeah. yeah yeah i felt good about that yeah good stuff Shit, so i uh, i don't know go to my etsy everybody go to my etsy and buy some comics yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sure. yeah. um buy my books you can find these books. You can find, like I was saying earlier, you can find book one and two of the greatest thing you've ever seen in your life. Find both of these and much more stuff. So many more, so much more stuff um, yeah. on Sonia Saturday's Etsy. And yeah. um, you can also find a lot of her, a lot of Sonia Saturday's other stuff on Amazon as well. But I recommend uh, trying to find what you can on Sonia Saturday's Etsy um, before you hit up Amazon. Um yeah. But yeah, so much good stuff on there. Go check it out, guys. Also, check out Sonya Saturday's IG. Um, and what 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 else are you on? Are you on anything? Any other social medias? Platform? Not really. I'm not. Uh, I'm most. I'm barely on social media at this point. I have my Instagram, and that's kind of it. I don't spend a lot of time really on anything else. Uh, okay. I I don't I don't enjoy it. <laughs> Yeah, I don't enjoy social media so much, but I keep I have my Instagram. So, okay, well, yeah. you can follow Sonia Saturday on Instagram, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, be sure to go over and check these books out. Seriously, guys, I'm not bullshitting. They're really funny, uh, really good artwork. I highly recommend. And uh, thank you so much for coming back and hanging out with me again. I really appreciate it, and uh, I know that it's like right dead in the middle of your day where you're at, and. Um, I appreciate you spending the time with me so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me back, Scott. This is like, I, I had such a good time last time and I'm really glad you asked me back. Like, like, like anytime, anytime you want to have me back, I'm, I'm down. I'm I definitely like yeah. next year after, after the, everything's said and done and you're feeling better and everything's going good again. I definitely uh, would love to have you back. It'd be cool. awesome. Would love to. Awesome. Definitely. That's awesome. You guys be sure to go follow Sonya Saturday on IG and check check out the stuff on Etsy. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching this evening. I appreciate you guys. I really do. Um, be sure to head on over to Between the Lines at Geek Out with Roscoe's channel. Uh, they got a great guest this evening. And uh, let's see. Who do I got next week? Oh, yeah. We got Colossus Collector. Ryan, Colossus Collector next week. Uh, So we have a really awesome guest. I hope you guys will come back next Monday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time and uh, hang out with me and Ryan. But thanks. Until next time, I'll leave you guys with some Biggie Shack like we always do. Later, guys. (laughs) I'd say that one is a banger, man. It's a real certified banger, dude.